What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Atlantic Files. This week, we are talking about if teams have figured out Jason Tatum or not, or if it's just a result that the Boston Celtics suck. We're talking about if Kemba Walker needs to move to a six man. Is Rich Paul really a good agent? And we're going to see who we would rather have, Tyrese Maxey or Ben Simmons. So without further ado, let's get into the show. The following podcast is part of the Underdog Sports Podcast Network. For advertising information or to find more great podcasts, visit us at www.theunderdogsports.com and follow us on Twitter at RealTheUnderdog. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Atlantic Files, the number one podcast on the number one division in the NBA, brought to you by the Underdog Sports Podcast Network, joined by your hosts, as always, myself, Alex Fishbein. We got Mike Bash. We got Dennis Stradamus, Dennis Clausen in the house. What's going on, fellas? What's going on? It's good to be back. <laughs> Things are good. The beard. My beard's looking great. My hair's on point. Are you participating in a no shave November over there, Dennis? I don't even know what I don't even know what that is. No shave just, November? You just I don't shave that. In the whole Are you month that old? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm gonna shave. I mean, you gotta <laughs> keep it clean, you know. True. And I was gonna. I was gonna also say I may or I may not be wearing pants right now. Well, we don't want to find that out, so it's okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so first things before we get into everything, I know that it's been a topic of discussion in our group chat and everything. All right, fantasy basketball. Mike wants to talk about how he's four and zero right now, and he is the best team, and blah blah blah. Dennis put up the most amount of points last week with his team. I'm somehow three and one after starting a rebuild, which doesn't make much sense to me, especially with my fantasy football being the opposite. So let, let's settle this here. Who's going to win this league? Because I got my money on Speedy Claxton. What? Well, timeout. Timeout. <laughs> That's your brother. There's a bias there. I mean, I mean. There's a little bias, but his team is good. Is that your brother? That is my brother, yeah. Hmm. Well, fuck it. Well, For I just think, hit, yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. In this game pick scenario, in this mode that Sleeper runs, I think mm -hmm. the best strategy is to have consistency. And and not only to have consistency, you want to have guys across the board that are going to bring it every night. Now, Dennis has Trey, has Luca, has LeBron, has Pascal Siakam, Harden, James Harden. He's got a great team. He's got a great team. Joey but buckets. He, but if he but if he has injuries, and LeBron's thirty six, Siakam gets hurt, Harden gets hurt, Trey's a wuss. Luca gets hurt. If he has any sort of injuries, I think he's screwed. He has the upside. He has the absolute upside to run away with the league because he traded all his picks away. But if he has an injury, he doesn't have the depth behind him to continue on. Not to... one, not two, not three, not four. Meanwhile, my team has been Shit. trending up and up and up. Since week one. Not five. And I still got Jonathan Isaac to come back. I still got Jamal Murray maybe to come back. Still got Dante DiVincenzo maybe to come back. I got some guys that might break out on, on the bench, on my taxi. I'm building a dynasty. Dennis is like – Dennis is going to be like last year's Brooklyn Nets, and I'm going to be like the early 2000s Los Angeles Lakers. Not six. <laughs> Dennis doesn't learn from his mistakes. In football, he did the same thing. I got Nurkic in the he middle. Is, he is falling like a rock. The surging Jakob Pertl. Right, let's go position good. by position real quick. <laughs> Let me see if it lets me... I want to share the screen to show... Um, Jeremy Grant, I have. Some standings here. Will Barton. Will Barton. 
Okay. Pounding so. nails, number one. <laughs> yes, we got Mike in number one. We got Speedy Claxon in number two, which is my brother. It's not actually Speedy Claxon for those back home. We had Mike thinking it was the real Speedy Claxon for a little bit there. That was fun. But Mike's friend Nas in third. You got me in fourth at three and one. You got Dennis in fifth at two and two. Then we got a bunch of other two and twos and Tommy. We got a bunch of Eagle fans after that. Exactly. We got Dennis's brother-in-law at number nine. Then bringing up the the Virginia trio in the bottom three. Exactly. Which some of them are trying to be in the bottom three and some just went all out last season, a.k.a. Bob. Yeah, well, and the problem is Bob doesn't have his own draft pick. So Alex is sitting on the draft pick that will That's end right. up being either Chet Holmgren or pa- Paolo Banchero. So. That's right. Dennis got a, not Dennis, Alex has a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A uh, a great deal of riches. I can't think of the correct term. Um, at his it's insane hinky season. But Dennis Stradamus. <laughs> is not winning this league. I have ammunition if I need to go get another guy. I have plenty of ammunition. I've got plenty left in the tank. You're going to need go, it. If I, gonna need it <laughs> if I need to go get another guy, I can go get it. I can match up with Dennis anytime. anytime. You're here. I said Jeremy Grant, Will Barton. Will the Thrill is going to come down with Bones Highland emerging, with Jamal maybe coming back. Don't, I'm not worried about Will Barton. I mean, there's room for both of them with the with the way the the Nuggets have been. Health not worried about Jeremy Grant. It's going to be Cade Cunningham season soon enough. I mean, it can not be Cade seven, Cunningham season all they want, eight. but they need more than just him. Yeah, Sadiq <laughs> Bay, Killian Hayes. They did beat the Raptors the other night, though. They did. Oh yeah, your boy Scotty Barnes couldn't even card Cade Cunningham with a bad angle. Sadiq Bay is my boy, though. That's that's the guy on my team. I tell you though, Scotty Barnes, rookie of the year. No shot. If I he's mean, not rookie of the year, the Evan way Mobley. he's playing right no, absolutely not. Yeah, well, no, yeah, he will. If be. Scotty Barnes is not rookie of the year, the way he's playing, that's that the, that award means absolutely nothing. Evan Mobley is playing better than Scotty Barnes. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Uh, no, he's not. Yeah, he is. Alex, can we get some stats going here? <laughs> I just was about to say that I I think Scotty's 1A and Mobley's 1B. So I still give the edge to Scotty. But Mobley's right behind him. I just I just don't After those two, it's kind of a crapshoot. Although the the one person who might be the closest behind them unless I'm some are slipping my mind might be Josh Giddy. Josh Giddy's actually been really good. I was trying to do, I'm on basketball ref. I'm trying to give you some stats. And uh, of course, I somehow got on the WNBA player uh, player tools. Uh, <laughs> Diana Taurasi's better than Evan Mobley. <laughs> I mean, Elena Deladon. Scotty Barnes is putting up 16 points, eight rebounds, All right, two I got it, assists, I got it, I got it, and one steal we'll, a game. We'll go, we'll go per, per 36 minutes. Are you ready? Oh, God. Here we go. We got per 36 minutes. They are pretty much deadlocked in points. They are pretty – they're deadlocked in steals. Barnes is half an assist more. They're deadlocked in rebounds. Um, Mobley has a full block more. And Expected. let's see, free throw percentage Mobley, field goal percentage Mobley, three-point percentage Mobley, field goal attempts for a game Barnes. So can we, can we, how about defensive rating or do you not know how to do that? I was avoiding that because uh, <laughs> defensive rating, Mobley 102, Barnes 109. So who's what about better? offensive rating? Mobley's better on the defensive end. On the offensive end, Mobley 114, and Barnes is 113. So, at the end of the day, Mobley's a better player. (laughs) 
I will say though, if you if you think about the win shares, win shares, Mobley one point six, Scotty Barnes one point one, Vorp 0.5, Mobley point one, Scotty Barnes. I can keep going. I mean, win shares and stuff is going to be a little skewed because the Raptors have a better team around Scotty than Cleveland does around Mobley. But who has more wins this year? Cleveland. Pretty sure it's – is it Cleveland? How many no, does so Cleveland have? You're my point that Mobley is better. But as I was going to say before you kept rambling, I was going to say the only – the reason – the more I was thinking about it, the reason I can't see Mobley emerging – as rookie of the year, at least right now, is based on the contributions he's had to his team and the fact that the Cavaliers are playing pretty damn good, and he's a pretty he's a big reason a part of it. Yeah, however, Astrodamus told you about the Cavaliers. However, <laughs> I you were if if we go back and we listen to who was shitting all over the Cavaliers and who was saying that they would play better, I think Dennis Stradamus again, accurately <laughs> predicted that the Cavaliers were going to be better than you thought they were. So, but 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 you also got to take into the fact that Scotty Barnes has also been very instrumental to the Raptors who are playing also better than expected. This is very true, especially before Pascal Siakam came back. Correct. Either way, those are definitely the top two for Rookie of the Year. Yeah, and I mean, like, honestly, you could go either way with those guys, to be honest with you. Yeah, and third place in Rookie of the Year is pretty far behind both of them. Whoever third place is. I mean, out of all the people I've seen, especially, like right now with Cade Cunningham, he missed so much in the beginning, and he hasn't like been consistent just yet, so you can't even really put him in the conversation and Jalen green is just kind of been like Anthony Edwards and just jacking up everything. He gets a chance to jack up. I mean, so, Suggs, Suggs is playing. Okay. Just not, you know, yeah. Suggs has had nowhere, some great flashes. He's not in on that consistency level as like a Mobley or a Scotty Barnes is, but we still have a long season to go. Yeah. As I said, I, if for me, I think third place would probably be Josh Giddy, but again, He's not close to Mobley and Barnes, but kind of how and, like Mike's not close to me in our fantasy basketball league. That's farthest from the truth, but okay. <laughs> we shall I'm in see. first place right now. I can't wait to play you. <laughs> so let's you actually get in. Alex bent over and gave you all his players. That's all. Well, I got plenty of good picks. Up. I, I got. You got I got. I got Bob's first round pick out of that. Yeah, it's not worth LeBron and Siakam. Well, I also got Jared Allen, Andrew Wiggins, and another first another first round pick. <laughs> but anyway, um, let's get into what we were actually going to talk about here. So, first things first, we need to talk about Jason Tatum. He has, I mean, he's shown the normal Jason Tatum flashes every now and again. He's been putting up a lot of points, but that's also because he's just jacking up tons of shots. Um, the Celtics are still underperforming. They it's like Mike uh, in the bedroom. <laughs> they just, I mean, keep giving up big leads. They keep giving up late leads or they just keep getting, beaten or blown up by teams that they shouldn't be beaten by um this year he's dipped three points per game uh he's dipped assist wise he's dipped steal wise turnovers have gone up a tiny little bit he's fouled more than last year his field goal percentage as a total is only 38 percent and he's taking two more shots a game than he was last year three point percentage is at 32 percent and Free throw percentage has even dipped 12 points from 86 down to 74. So the question is, have people just figured out Jason Tatum or is he just trying to do way too much because this Celtics team sucks? 
I think it's a little of both. I, I don't want to say Jason Tatum has been figured out because I think Jason Tatum is one of the top five players in the, in the league. Um, I think he's feeling pressure that the team needs to win. The team is built around him and Jalen Brown, and they're just no matter what they do, it doesn't. It hasn't been working out. Um, I think that guys are defenses are starting to scheme and leave guys like. Robert Williams and Marcus Smart, and even you've even seen Dennis Schroeder. Like they've leaving these guys open and less attention in games that they've won. You've seen Schroeder go off for like thirty eight. Like I saw him went off for thirty something. So when those guys go off, it, it masks the you know problems that the Celtics have. Um, defenses are focusing on the big two and making the other teams beat them, or the other guys beat them. So. I don't think that it's Tatum's gotten figured out. I just think the Boston team isn't put together in a way that both Tatum can flourish and the team can win. Um, I like Robert Williams as a player. I like Marcus Smart as a player. I like Dennis Schroeder as a player. But those are three guys that really struggle to space the floor and shoot the ball. And they're all good defensive players. They're really smart and, and that Williams are. But – if you're going to clog up the lane and clog up the team, it doesn't fit around Brown and Tatum. Tatum, Tatum could score from anywhere, but Brown is a slasher. Uh, he could shoot, but he's, you know, he's a, he's a high flying slasher guy likes to get in the lane, get, you know, get going. So I think either they need to make a trade like Dennis has said for Bradley Beal, um, or they need to, you know, reshuffle their lineups a bit, find a way to maybe bring Schroeder off the bench or, or bring smart off the bench get the spit get better spacing better play calling i don't think their team is irreparable but i think they're either it was they're in a position where they need to shake things up or make a move so i i agree with mike i the the teams haven't well the teams have figured out jason tatum but what they figured out was jason tatum's the only guy who could score on that team Outside of Jason Tatum and uh, Jalen Brown, only Dennis Schroeder, Al Horford, and Robert Williams are score are averaging double digits in scoring, and it's not even like good double digits. It's like we're scratching and clawing to get into the double digits. Um, and Robert Williams is not a he's not a scorer as much as he is a defensive player, glass cleaner. Al Horford's 35 years old, and he's one bad fall or whatever away from being injured. And Dennis Schroeder's Dennis Schroeder. So this team does not have enough pieces to lose a guy like Jalen Brown, especially he's Jalen Brown has had COVID already. Now he's out with a knee injury. So really the only guy that you can depend on is Tatum, who's with without Brown is averaging 26 points, nine, 9.2 boards, and actually shooting better without Jalen Brown in the lineup. However, as we've talked about before, the Rockets relied on one guy for many years for the most part, and that was Gene Tarden. Jason Tatum is not that mature. He's not that dominant of a player. He's a really, really, really good player, but he's not doesn't have that from an emotional standpoint, like Mike alluded to. I don't think he's he's fully ready to handle this type of load, the type of pressure that they're putting on him. They desperately need to make a trade for Bradley Beal. They desperately need to do something to beef up that offense because defensively they're playing well. They're actually playing better defensively this year by a pretty good margin than they were last season. Offensively, they, they can't do it. And and you can't, you can't attribute any of this to Jason Tatum's uh, decrease in shooting percentages or anything like that, because one guy can only do so much unless you're, Kobe, Michael, Michael Jordan, or any of those guys, he can only do so much. So until other guys step up, which I don't think they have a guy on a team who has that high of a ceiling to where they could actually step up, this team's going to be horrendous. Yeah. 
Oh, no, I, I completely agree. And on top of that, a lot of those guys, other than James Harden, like you said, like Kobe and Michael Jordan and all those guys, they at least had some sort of distributor on the team. They had pieces that fit well around them. They had guys that could take the heat off of them and in some situations, whether it be, you know, crunch time throughout the first, second, third, whatever it may be. And Tatum really doesn't have any of that. And on top of that, I kept seeing on like Twitter and Instagram and stuff of like Celtics fans saying like, oh, the Celtics won the Horford trade, blah, blah, blah. They also won the Jason Richardson trade and all this kind of stuff or Josh Richardson. Sorry. Um, And I just sitting there like, what did you win? Okay, Horford's playing a little bit better than like Kemba and stuff like that. But at the at the end of the day, you're not playing better than the Knicks. Your team's not doing any better than what you were supposed to be doing. Your, your team has been pretty awful. And I will admittedly say my uh, trying to be cute coach of the year pick is completely off because Ime Udoka has been off. awful, awful. I mean, they're, they're like, I think I saw a stat earlier today that said they are the lowest scoring team out of timeouts. And that's usually when the coach draws up some sort of play, gets them into an action and gets them a bucket. And they are the worst in the league at that. So from top to bottom, from coaching all the way down to the pieces they have, the team is pretty terrible. I mean, yes, they're hovering around 500, but like, especially like even the advanced stats for Tatum, like he's a 96 offensive rating and a 106 defensive rating that that's just pretty bad so i mean it's not all his fault but the team is also awful but if you also look at the teams they beat late lately they did beat miami but they beat with with half of kyle lowry because he got hurt with a sprained ankle they lost to the Mavs. they beat the raptors no big deal they beat milwaukee (coughs) excuse me they beat milwaukee however milwaukee hasn't had middleton milwaukee hasn't had uh, Gian- Giannis for on Friday. Milwaukee's been without Drew Holiday. Milwaukee's been without uh, Brooke Lopez. So th- they they've yeah. been struggling. So you know if you beat them, okay, no big deal. But then you know they ended up losing uh, to the Cavs, which the Cavs are pretty damn good. So they haven't really done anything to suggest that they're really that good of a team. They're not. No, Good and they all. and they it's, took overtime to even beat Milwaukee, who did not have Giannis or and, Middleton. And say what you want about uh, Evan Fonier, and and um, I, I've been pretty open about how I feel about him as a player. Um, and Kemba Walker is is injury prone as he is. Losing those two guys and replacing them with Josh Richardson and Dennis Schroeder is a significant step down agreed completely agreed it's it, it's amazing to me too that a lot of people are like oh jason tatum jalen brown you know adding schroeder who had a pretty good year last year for the lakers people started thinking like top five top six seed and then now you look at reality and it's like you yeah, know you'd be lucky to even make the play in as a 10 seed so yeah, I don't I don't think they're playoff unless they make that trade unless they they desperately and and I feel like right now with with Bradley Beal with what's going on is his grandmother had had passed away recently and he's been out due to personal issues I don't I I just see all the pieces getting set in motion here for for a Bradley Beal just head into bot, they need to make that move. That's the only thing that's going to save them. Yep. What about a what about a move? And this is not like a star move, but it might be a move that I feel like could help both teams. I don't know okay. if the contracts are out, but what about like a Marcus Smart for Buddy Heald trade? Uh, that would absolutely help. That would definitely help. The only the only issue for me then is like 
you're getting rid of another quote unquote point guard for somebody who's not going to be like a facilitator or anything. It would help on the shooting end of things. It would help somebody. It would help so that Tatum has a guy to pass to that could actually hit a shot, but that would hit your defense and you still need a actual point guard. Cause I don't think Schroeder's that guy either. No, he's, a, he's had a history of always being a, uh, make his own plays, you know, score, not not really that much of a a playmaker. So right. it the, the whole the whole team is a mess. Yeah. Whole team I agree. I mean like you got rid of Kemba, you got rid of those guys, you got rid of a bunch of people who have actually played point guard in the NBA and you have none of them anymore. So, I'm not exactly sure what they thought was going to happen. But we did bring up Kemba a few times. So let's transition over to Kemba real quick. Kemba's like, obviously... Which, which is what we thought Mike was doing when he wasn't here last week. <laughs> exactly. So Kemba has not been great this year. Um, we all know he's injury prone. We all know that it was going to be dicey when the Knicks made the move to get Kemba Walker. Um, he's started all 12 games that he's actually played in, but he's only putting up 12 points, two rebounds, three assists a game. Um, percentages aren't bad, though. He's shooting 42% from the floor, 43% from three, uh, 77% from the line. But he isn't exactly like the reason that the Knicks are winning games when he's in. Um he doesn't even have like a full win share. His offensive plus minus is at a 0.9. So there's a lot of things that they expected him to help out with when he came in. And that's not exactly happening. We know he's kind of a liability on defense too. Um, <clears throat> so my question is, I've seen a lot of rumblings and everything about people saying Derek Rose should be starting over Kemba Walker. Would Kemba be better fit at this stage in his career as a sixth man, or should he continue to start on this team? <clears throat> the problem is I just don't know if you want to put Derrick Rose in that situation. Not to say Derrick Rose isn't the better option, but we know Derrick Rose is a guy who struggles to stay healthy, who's now, what, 32 years old? 20, yeah, something like that. 34 years old, almost. Um, yeah, he's almost 34, so it's like, is or he just turned 33, I'm sorry. So, like, is that going to be the smartest thing? It, it's like, I don't know what the right answer for. Um, maybe they, they kind of go away from like, oh, we have a start. You know, you have a starting point guard, but you don't give them starter minutes. And instead, maybe you give... Uh, you give, you know, you have 48 minutes to give to the point guard position. You give Rose 20, 22 minutes. You give Walker 20 minutes, and then you give quickly, you know, the remaining minutes at, at point guard. Um, I don't know. Their current breakout right now is Rose is getting 23 minutes, Kemba's getting 26 minutes, and Quickly's getting 16 minutes. So that's over the 48 number. But maybe, maybe take five minutes away from Walker, give a minute or two to Rose more, give a minute more to quickly. And, and, and that shapes it out better for them. Um, I just don't, I just don't know if you trust Rose to stay healthy and put, if you're putting him in the starting lineup and you expect him to play 27 to 30 minutes a night, I don't know how long he'll last doing that. So I, I agree with Mike again. Um, you're going to take one guy who's injury prone, replace him with another guy who's they're both older for it from an NBA standpoint. So you got two guys with a significant history of injuries. So, however, they're both producing at a pretty good level and they're doing probably more than a lot of people expected for them to do, especially Derek Rose, who's actually playing, pretty damn well for a guy who has really dealt with injuries and Kemba Walker shooting really well. He's playing 26 minutes and you don't really want to uh, add more time onto him at all. So the Knicks, they start off five and one in the month of November. They're, they're, they're two and five. They, 
They lost to the Raptors, the Pacers, Cleveland. Uh, they they beat Philly, but Philly hasn't been Philly. They literally have half a team there. Uh, instead of wondering what Kemba Walker is doing, why don't we start wondering what the hell R.J. Barrett's been doing? Because That's a good point too. Because when you think of the top option on the Knicks. We all know Julius Randle's the top option, but then it all starts with R.J. Barrett after. All right, not Kemba, not Fournier, not Derrick Rose, not Quickly, not any of those guys. It all starts with R.J. Barrett, who has who started off the month pretty well, but then his most recent game, he scored two points on 11% shooting, nine points the game before that against Charlotte, 30 37% from the floor and then he had 6 points against Cleveland and that's a third overall pick. What the hell are we doing? All right, so Keb- Kemba wasn't brought in to to be the fi- the 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 thing that's going to fix this whole thing and lead them to a championship. He was just a piece that was supposed to be added to a team that was playing pretty well last year. R.J. Barrett sure. has really good nights. He could score 25 if he wants to. He could score 30 on some nights. He could score really well, but the inconsistency, that's not acceptable, especially for a guy who's been in the league this long. He needs to get his shit together because if until he does, they're going to continue to struggle. On top of that, the Knicks have been dealing with injuries. Noel's been hurt for a pretty significant portion of the year. Mitchell Robinson is Mitchell Robinson. He's playing. He, he He's doing what he is supposed to be doing. The problem with this team, and I'm going to beat this to death, it is R.J. Barrett is the biggest problem that the Knicks have right now. He needs to get his shit together and start being consistent. And until that happens, everything else around it's going to fall apart. And even Tibbs knows that there's a game, a couple games ago, he pulled all his guys because he's so sick of how the starting lineups playing like shit. He knows, he knows this is going on. So yeah, RJ Barrett needs to fix himself. Oh yeah. I mean, and on top of RJ Barrett needing to, to really fix things up is, I mean, the team as a whole, once the once it hit the month of november it's like everyone just kind of forgot how to play like they were the month prior i mean randall's stats when you look at his splits between october and november aren't too terribly different um and he was actually i mean shooting some better like a true shooting percentage a field goal percentage he was shooting better in november um But like his offensive rating went down, defensive rating down. He was a plus 8.5 in October and now a negative 17.2 in November. Um, And then Evan Fournier is one of the guys that has just kind of disappeared off the face of the earth. I mean, I know he's not supposed to be like their savior either. And it's still I mean, it trickles down from the top when you have Randall and Barrett. If they start playing not that well, this whole team could really just crumble. And um, I mean, Evan Fournier, we saw some great, great games out of him in October. And <clears throat> that was part of the reason why he, I mean, why the Knicks even won, because he was providing some extra scoring when somebody else wasn't. He was putting up 16 points, three rebounds, two assists a game in the month of um, October. Sorry, that's 17, three and two. In November, he's only putting up nine, three and one, shooting below 40% from the field shooting below 30% from three, a 94 offensive rating from three in November. Exactly. I mean, he's been garbage, just, just like legitimate trash. And there's a lot of things that the Knicks have to take a look at. Yes. I mean, Kemba's uh, not giving you like Kemba like numbers, but at the same time, probably shouldn't have been expected because he's older, injury prone, so on and so forth. Derek Rose giving you much better production than you would have ever expected. It's the guys that you expect the high production that are not giving it to you that the Knicks should be worried about. Well, I don't That's know how many everyone up top. They also need to 
give my boy Obi Toppin a little more playing time. Oh, they need to give quickly more playing time too, because I f- there's some games that quickly gets like four minutes, but, and then they lose because they got blown out. I, I just don't. Uh, Thibs is a great coach, and obviously, what he's done with the Knicks has been great. Like he he turned them from a team that was consistently underperforming and one of the more, you know bad teams in the league to a team that now like has playoff aspirations and even deep playoff run aspirations. But sometimes he he gets so and it was his problem in in Chicago and I think it was the same problem he had in Minnesota. He he just loves his core veterans and his like starters way too much. And he runs them into the ground every time. Like he needs to get these guys, these young guys in. He needs to get these players in that can contribute. And he 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 just I don't know. He does the same thing everywhere he goes. He he he's a winning coach, and he turns teams around, and he's able to to get the best out of teams sometimes. But sometimes he he gets in his own way. And yeah, he, I, I think uh, some of his lineup decisions have shown that. Yeah, he went to the Mike D'Antoni school of rotations because he doesn't play anybody outside of a certain group of guys. Yeah. And this he is essentially this is, sorry, I was just gonna say real quick, he's essentially the only guy playing a playoff rotation during the regular season. Like he has like a seven man rotation and he's sticking to it. And then everyone outside of that, maybe they might get a few minutes here and there. Yeah, and, and this is exactly uh Fournier scored over 20 points once this season. And that was the first game of the season. Since then And just when everybody was getting rock hard for Fournier after he had 32 uh, points in that game against Boston and he was shit hot and played super well and everybody was like, yeah, Fournier, look at him. And I'm like, don't buy into this bullshit. This guy's going to fall flat on his face just like he has every other game of the place. He's he's made for the Olympics, but nowhere else. Yeah. He's not that. He's not. He's not that good. He's not that guy. No. <laughs> he is who we not. thought we, he was. They are <laughs> exactly. who we thought they were. <laughs> exactly. So, enough about the Knicks. because Yeah, because I'm starting throw to throw up. Yeah, it's starting to get depressing. Okay, what's um, nice. What'd you say, Mike? What'd you say? Talk about something good. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's good or not. Um, <laughs> but, so, on to the circus... That is Rich Paul, Ben Simmons, and the Sixers. My question, because he's been in the news a lot and he's been making comments and everything. Mm. Is Rich Paul really a good agent or is he just a product of LeBron James? Because you got Nerlens Noel who's trying to sue Rich Paul for losing out on a lot of money on not taking a contract back in the day with Dallas, I believe it was. Um, And now... With this whole Ben Simmons thing, Rich Paul makes a statement that says, oh, you know, the fines and everything are worsening Ben's mental health and no one no one is helping him um, really work on his mental health and, and so on and so forth. And it's like, well, first off, anybody losing money is always going to be bad for your mental health. And if he just if if both sides could just come together and say, okay, you can go to this doctor, you can go to your own doctor, whatever it may be, and then the fines would just stop if both sides just said, let's just figure it out, and it's done, and then we'll trade you once we find the right deal. That's all you need to do. Not come out and make stupid comments, and then try and say, like, oh, the Sixers fans are never going to let Ben play in the in the the on the team again. It's like, well, Ben still doesn't want to play on the Sixers either. So you saying that doesn't help any situation. And on top of that, like Rich Paul has not done anything or said anything that has helped facilitate any kind of deal. It is only hurt. So I'm just trying to figure out, is this guy actually a good agent or is he just here just to, because LeBron brought him in? I think the answer for any, is this guy good or is it because LeBron is just it's because LeBron Rich Paul is not a good agent. He just is riding the coattails of LeBron. Maverick Carter is not a good businessman. He's just riding the coattails of LeBron. And 
anyone else attached to LeBron is not a good X, Y, Z. They're just riding the coattails of LeBron. I hate these when people put Maverick Carter and Rich Paul on some sort of pedestal and say how great they are. If LeBron James was six foot tall and not, you know, very, very good at basketball, these guys would never be heard of. No one would know who any of these guys were. Like, Rich Paul is only an agent because of LeBron. He didn't even have the credentials to be an agent, but they made an exception for him because of LeBron. Well, I mean, I I agree. Again, for this is great. This is weird. This is a weird episode with you yeah. agreeing so much. <laughs> I mean, the the only thing good right now that Rich Paul is doing is is Adele. Um, <laughs> I forgot that's a relationship. That's a weird relationship. You like that? <laughs> but she's a phenomenal singer great She's, oh great great album great album yeah fa- yeah uh, excellent anyways i have a hard time personally believing that ben simmons mental struggles are as bad as he is being told to make them i don't think that him personally he might be battling some things and I'm going to walk very carefully around this. Okay. Cause this is one of those things, but that you kind of don't talk about or say anything negatively about. Well, it's just one of those things like we're not, we're not trying to shed any kind of negative light on people who are actually dealing with mental health issues or mental health itself, stuff like that. That is thank you. So, all right, I'll say what Dennis is trying to say. It seems like Ben Simmons is using an excuse that's very hard to contest because of the climate and situation that we are in. And it's, a, it's an, for lack of a better term, it's an easy escape for him to not play. Yep, because there are some things in this, in this world right now that are going on that you cannot question somebody on. And mental health has been such in the forefront lately, especially since the pandemic has been going on. People's mental health has significantly deteriorated across the country. And mental health awareness is huge, as it should be. All right? Anybody dealing with that type of crap, you know, it's not, it's, it's awful. So with that said... That's one of those things that you can't question somebody on. If somebody says, I'm dealing with mental health issues, I'm dealing with anxiety, I'm dealing with this, that, you can't come out and and challenge somebody on that. So, however, I'm going to say it anyways. I I mean, I don't care. I, I, I honestly, I'm not sure if Ben Simmons, I think he's per, being persuaded to kind of go that route because if the Sixers continue to find him or aren't being as supportive as, as they should be, the Sixers are the ones who are going to look bad. Anybody in the Sixers organization who's going to challenge a mental health diagnosis, especially when people around the country are suffering, they're the ones that are going to look bad. So in that case, I, I think Rich Paul – is smart enough and and maybe a, a a scumbag like he he's he's smart enough to know okay well here's the thing let's just tell him that you're suffering from depression you know what i mean so if anybody comes right. back and says anything about ben simmons they're gonna look like shit yeah and, and that's my biggest question is who is actually saying this is rich paul saying this or is ben simmons saying this because most of the articles say ben simmons camp has said X, Y, Z, not Ben Simmons. I don't think it's Ben Simmons saying it at all, honestly. I ju- I think he's being coached to, to do this, to be honest with you. And it, right. I'm not saying, I'm not saying he doesn't have these issues. Okay. I'm just <clears throat> saying he has these issues, but he's, he's got people who may, and I'm not saying it's 100% true. I'm saying who may 
be getting in his ear and, and telling him to exploit that to his benefit. Right. And I'm always on the Ben Simmons side. I, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, I'll never turn on Ben Simmons in this situation because what what Philadelphia has done to this guy, in my opinion, and, and all of us have kind of discussed this before, and everybody knows how I feel about how Ben Simmons was has been treated in Philadelphia, especially by the fan base. I, I don't think he's wrong for not wanting to play there by any means. However, if people are telling him to exploit mental illness, which I like I said, I don't know that's a fact, but that's not that's a that's a scumbag move. Oh yeah, completely agreed. What, what were you gonna say, Mike? Uh no, I forgot. I don't remember. Okay. Um, so transitioning that still on Ben Simmons. Um, Tyrese Maxey has been doing a pretty good job at starting point guard in place of Ben Simmons, uh, did a comparison of each player's second year in the league. Um, relatively the same minutes played. Uh, ben Simmons shooting. They made about the same amount per game at 6.9 to 6.8 field goals a game. Um, but Maxi has a little bit less of a field goal percentage because he's shooting from farther away. He is but he's still shooting 51.9% from the floor, 41% from three, 87.5% from the line, and he's averaging 17 points, uh, almost four rebounds, five assists, uh, and only one turnover a game. Ben uh, shot 56%. He shot 60% from the line, and then he averaged 16.9 points, 8.8 rebounds, 7.7 assists, and 1.4 steals with 3.5 turnovers. So my question to you guys is apples and oranges. Would you rather have Maxi or Ben Simmons? Ben Simmons. Uh Mike, you're on mute. His bag of Oreos. Well, right now or over the course of time? From here on out. I mean, it's hard. I, I can't with in in the right frame of mind say. Tyrese Maxey. That and th- being, this is assuming that Ben Simmons comes back to the court and he's playing and he's everything like that. Then Ben Simmons. Hmm. On this uh, Sixer team? On this no, Sixer you know, on, team? Like if, you, if you're starting a team, you have to pick one. Ben Simmons. I think I'll go with Maxey. But you're also a guy that likes CJ McConnell. So, I mean, I really question what you actually know sometimes. I like TJ McConnell because of the heart and passion he brings to the game of basketball. I mean, how do you not, not because, like TJ McConnell? Not because I think TJ McConnell's like LeBron. Like when you said Josh Harris is essentially LeBron. <laughs> or Joe Harris, not Josh Harris. Sorry. Yeah, they, they can't make free throw line jumpers. <laughs> Wide uncontested. I mean, I'm but, saying. Go ahead, Dennis. No, I'm saying this is apples and oranges. They're completely different types of players. The situations that they're dealing with are completely different. Um, Maxi's stats are relatively inflated because we got a, we you know street clothes has been out. Um, Tobias Harris hasn't played, so really they have nobody else. They have Andre Drummond, you know, Seth Curry every once in a while, Danny Green, you know what I mean? But they don't really have, like, consistent scoring options. So, of course, a guy like that's going to take advantage of it. He's going to gain usage, plus minus, you know, see an uptick in production. So, of course, that's going to happen. I mean, to be fair, though, in Simmons' second season as well, they didn't have a third, quote-unquote, like star or score or anything either. Like Tobias, oh, they didn't have there. a second one either. Well, yeah, because Ben Simmons isn't the second scorer. But I mean, in that year, they didn't really have many people. Uh, I mean, obviously, Embiid was still hurt most of the season as well. Wow, um, shocking. So, like, he Weird. still played plenty of the time without them. 
and he was putting up those kind of stats. I mean, obviously higher in rebounds and higher in assists because Maxi isn't the, like you said, they're not the same type of player. So it's a little different, but they, I mean, Ben wants to be a point guard. Maxi is a point guard. Um, and while the situations could have been a little different, it's still, to me, it just looks like Maxi has a higher work ethic, higher character, higher heart and passion than Ben Simmons does. Yeah, but if you're starting a team, like, you know, if, if Ben Simmons is in uh, Oklahoma City, does he have the same, you know, lack of effort? I mean, there was a lack of effort there from year one. It looked like he didn't improve on anything except for defense since year one. So, Copying a a quote right out of my book. (laughs) I mean, it is true, though. So it's kind of like maybe he doesn't have the same, you know, mental collapse anywhere else. But at the same time, the like I couldn't say that there's any reason why he would have a higher drive, higher work ethic anywhere else either. I mean, why? Why not? Would you want to? Would you want to play in a city that treated you like that? That throws snowballs at Santa Claus. His his first three seasons, the city loved Ben Simmons. Right, and they and they they turned they turned on him when he started to get criticized about shooting and and all that type of stuff. Ben Simmons is a ten times better player than Maxi is. Ben Simmons it could easily be a top twenty five player in the league, and I would even stay right now. He is. He's not. Stop. He could be a top twenty five player. He if could he, if he hit a he jump shot or a free throw. So, I mean, Ben Simmons, without Joel Embiid playing with him throughout his career, is averaging nearly 18 points, nine boards, and 7.3 assists. That's a guy who can get it done. If he improved his averages by a little bit, especially from the free throw line and and made some more, I think his biggest issue, too, is foul shooting. So if he could actually improve foul shooting, he would be, he his his points per game average would go up even more but it's but in in this landscape now of the nba where not a lot of fouls are being called anymore like they were i think he's going to be a better player if he came back and played than he's ever been but also the especially fact especially defensively said, too oh yeah defensively it, it helps him but the fact that you just said if he improved his free throw shooting He would already be bumping up those averages. That was part of the reason why the fans even turned on him because he couldn't even improve his free throw shooting. Yeah, but even even Andre Drummond increased his free throw shooting. Well, it's not it's it's not the things you say; it's how you say it. So there's there's criticizing a a player, and then there's just booing him and doing all the stupid shit that the Philly fans are known for. So I, and, and Joel Embiid calling him out and pretty much not taking blame for anything, even though he didn't directly say anything. Doc Rivers sucks. I mean, the, Ben Simmons was a scapegoat for the Sixers for many years. And I don't blame him for being the way he's been. But, like I said, in today's NBA, in the landscape of how things are when it comes to fouls and things like that, and who knows, maybe he he is a better shooter than he was. We just don't know that yet. So, I mean, it's true. If he came back and averaged 20 points a game, defensive rating was 100 or a little less, and he had seven rebounds and a steal or two, 1.6 steals, something like that would be a, any player would be dying to have a player like that. I completely agree. And even Philly fans would love him if he did. And and all these people want to get cute and, and then they start trying to find little shit. 
well, you know, when when he he can't space the floor or when he can't set picks and the blah blah like they try to find anything to just come up with something. But overall, Ben Simmons is a great player. And I'm gonna st- I'll stand by that. He's a very good player. He's a great player. He's a very He's good player. rated player. He's a great <laughs> player. But there's I gotta still... say one thing. Hold on. Can I say one thing? It has nothing yeah. to do with Ben Simmons. I was at the Jets game yesterday. Okay. You know that. how they have concessions all around the stadium? Mm-hmm. I saw they had like of course you would know that. They had on the side, they had like a bunch of those like standalone carts that were not being used. And there was mm-hmm. one for Rita's. And what did it say <laughs> on the side of it? It said water ice. <laughs> oh, and I just God. immediately thought of Dennis. <laughs> send me a picture. I should have sent you a picture, but I was walking with my boss and a couple of my friends to our seats. But I saw this, I go, water ice. And how, <laughs> I mean, how are you not selling water ice? I don't care it's November. It was 40 degrees. Who cares? It it's out of commission because Dennis ate them all. <laughs> <laughs> they should no, have. I was in East Rutherford, not Philly. <laughs> True. But still. It could be <laughs> negative forty, and it's still a good time for water. Can I also say this: I uh, I, have, I have a game on in in the background here on League Pass. Uh-huh. I accidentally was watching the wrong game. And what I mean by <laughs> that is I was watching. Apparently, the Celtics and Cavs played back to backs. Yes, they played. And I was watching yeah. last night's game. Smooth. <laughs> but all right, let's finish up here. It's um, okay, honey, you're tired. We get it. <laughs> Uh, we can do like two just quick hitter topics. Um, it came out. Alex Caruso talked about how the Lakers wouldn't even come close to matching the contract that Chicago gave him. They ended up offering more money to Talon Horton Tucker. Um, to me, that's a big mistake because Horton Tucker, while yes, he has some pretty good potential. I think that Caruso's obviously proving right now. He's the better player. By a good you see what budget. Horton Tucker did the other night? Have you seen Caruso this whole season? I agree, but I understand. And it's not even really offensively for Caruso. Yeah. They love, they, love Horton, they, love, they love THT in, in LA. Oh, I know. LeBron gushed about THT, and of course that's when they had to sign him. But I agree, Dennis. Caruso's defense, on top of the offensive abilities he has, I mean, has he's been not, huge for Chicago. They have so many other people who can score in Chicago, but what he's doing defensively, great defensive rating, 100 defensive rating, 2.5 steals, 8, 9, 10 points a game, something like that. Okay, then offensively, it's not going to blow you away, but the guy, the way he passes, the way he plays defense, he's... he's, he's I, I, they they totally missed the boat on Alex Caruso. And what's the one thing that the Lakers could really use? Defense. They're giving up tons of leads. Russell Westbrook's turning the ball over 10 times a game, and they're losing because they can't defend anybody. They are garbage. They are. And yeah, did you see the... I, I thought of you, dude. I, I had a, uh, another story that I thought of Dennis. Uh, they showed a picture of the Lakers bench and like five of them were in street clothes. <laughs> and they said that their bench has more street clothes than uniforms. <laughs> I mean, when you have, you know, 40 year olds on your team, that's what's going to happen. Exactly. The They don't look like a playoff team either. So they they messed up. This is the beginning well, it started last year, but this is the beginning of the end for LeBron James. He's yeah. he's getting hurt way more. And I used to think to myself, I go, holy shit, this guy never gets hurt. Say what you want about LeBron, but that guy is built like a brick shit house. There's no the guy is just in amazing shape. He takes care of his body, but he's starting to break down. And yeah. he's not what he once was. He's still great, still one of the best players in the league, but he's just not what he used to be. He's not he's not capable of of carrying an entire team on his back like he did with the Cavs to a championship. 
Agreed. I mean, he was and, indestructible in playing like 35, 36 minutes a game for like 17 seasons. Yeah, without like missing anything. And, and then Dennis Clinton traded for him and he got hurt. Yeah, but you know. <laughs> but then the thing is the too, and it goes back to my point too about Anthony Davis, how many times has that guy been on the injury report already this season? I don't think there's been one game where Anthony Davis hasn't been on the injury report. Yeah. I mean, one of the biggest, one of the all-time street clothes players. They, uh, <laughs> he might, he's worse than Embiid. He's all-team first street clothes. He, <laughs> All-NBA first exactly. street clothes. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely all-team street clothes. I mean, it's embarrassing. I'd be, I'd be like, I'd be like, Anthony, honey, can, can I mean, I get it. Like, some, but do do you have to go on the injury report all the time? <laughs> Just one time, take a break from the injury report. <laughs> yeah, like he's on he's on the injury report. Like, I don't know. It's it's crazy. Yeah. So, wrapping it up with our final topic. I feel like I know who your guys' answers are going to be. Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, or Jokic? Who's your MVP right now? Because yeah, these are pretty much the You don't need my three. answer. Have a good night. You don't need my answer. <laughs> yeah, All right, I so do. we got one Kevin Durant. We got one Jokic. <laughs> I'm saying Steph Curry. I was not saying Jokic. You were saying Kevin Durant too? Yeah. Wow. I really thought you were going to go Jokic. Katie's back to being the best player in the world. There's no one better than him. I don't know, man. Jokic has been pretty great. And he even got in a fight. <laughs> I he he did move past Curry on my list for throwing around moron, you know. <laughs> Flat boy. True. But to me, what Steph Curry is doing right now is Amazing. insanity. Amazing. Just straight insanity. But what Kevin Durant has been doing is also pretty damn impressive. And you know something? Uh, James Harden's starting to look pretty damn good, too. He's and, getting back up there, finally. And, you know, guys are getting hard hats down there in Brooklyn. And guys are... And, and honestly... Uh, the way LaMarcus Aldridge has been playing, I think I was saying in my mind, this is kind of like a big three. Yeah, LaMarcus. Patty Mills, too. Patty Mills had eight eight threes on Sunday. I mean, Patty Mills is turning out of his mind. Australian Patty Mills. First off, my pick for sixth man of the year right there. Well, I mean. Don't forget that. I I do not blame you one bit because he's playing out of his mind. (laughs) Bruce Brown is playing well. Blake Griffin's playing well. Harris does, plays in. Eh, he's shooting well. His percentage, I think he's shooting 47% from three. So they're sure. playing defense better. They're in when Kyrie comes back. Javon Carter has been a really nice defensive addition. Yeah, he's a horrible shoot. I watched him shoot a three point shot and I said, honey, never do that again. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. He's like a, he's he's a he's better as like a Tony Allen. Not not you don't need him for offense. Uh, <laughs> Andre Roberson, stop stop taking uh, Andre <laughs> Roberson Jr. Stop taking three point shots. <laughs> he he shot a three. And I'm like, come on, baby. You got all these guys out here who could who could shoot, and you're taking a three. Don't I? I if I was Steve Nash, I'd be like, listen, Jim, I, I I love you. You're great. Don't ever Dennis, shoot. You the just sound like a creep. <laughs> he should. He should just do the the thing that um LeBron told Dwight Howard. Like if he blocks two or three shots, then he gets to attempt a three. Just like if you get three steals, we'll let you attempt one three. I mean, I think DeAndre Jordan may have had a better shot of taking of making a three because I saw he did this pump fake thing with his legs where he had to like pump. You know, like when you're a kid on the swing, you like double kick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Mike always had to have somebody push him on the swing, but most of us who were athletic enough to actually p- pump ourselves, he did Dennis, that. To I don't shoot. think Dennis fit in the swing. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, I got all these comebacks coming. I, I've reached my vulgarity level for the night, so I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> well. 
That's a good thing because I think that's our last topic. So unless you guys have anything to get off your chest, I think that's it for us. No? no. Good? No. Just uh, frustrating watching some of these players plays in this game that I'm watching that uh, aren't panning out for me right now. I'm at I mean, what kind of game wears a Snoopy shirt? I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. I got it at Walmart. <laughs> he just needed to save money. He's Jewish. Whoa. Okay. Hey. Hey. I, I can say that. I'm half Jewish. You can only say half of that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> you He's could, Jew. You should have just been like, you can only say <laughs> he needed to save money. and You should have just cut it at that. <laughs> Yeah, you just say money Jew. That's it. <laughs> he is Jew. Not Jewish. He's Jew. <laughs> anyway, that's it for us. <laughs> Happy Hanukkah, fellas. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening and watching another episode of The Atlantic Files, the number one podcast on the number one division in the NBA, brought to you by the Underdog Sports Podcast Network. If you're watching on YouTube, right below, hit the subscribe, hit the bell, get notified every time we upload videos. We're uploading all the time. So make sure you do that. Also, if you're listening anywhere you get your podcast, that's where we're at. So drop a rating, drop a review. That helps us out big time as Dennis styles his hair and still becomes Dennis Stradamus. So you guys can hair. see that more often. I'm exactly. surprised. We, we, I mean, ladies, if you want to see great hair, <laughs> Mike's, Mike's around. Exactly. <laughs> but that is it for us. Thank you, everyone. And we'll catch you guys next week. Peace.